Okay, let's do a quick tutorial on creating a hammered metal texture in 3ds Max and V-Ray and we're going to use uh, procedural maps, we're going to use a other map in order to do this. Now these are some reference images of hammered metal and it can look quite different here, you've got very sharp edges you know, here it's just a dent and here it's less sharp but still very obvious what's going on. So, let's get to it. First of all, open your material editor Add a V-Ray material and just make sure you have the item selected and assign that. Okay, then you need to go to your maps, go to general, just double click on your cellular map and we're going to put that straight into bump. Now we're going to make this, do a very quick basic metal material here, just make the diffuse, black, turn on show background, make the reflection to about here, turn off Fresnel, and make the glossiness 0.6. The problem with this if I render is the bump goes the wrong way. You can clearly see it's not hammered metal. Now you would think that logically if you would swap over this, like if I just click open preview window on here and open this up, you know, you'd say, oh, okay, good. Well, yeah, obviously this makes sense because the whites here are coming up and the blacks are going down. So you'd think, well, if I swap these over, that would handle that problem, and now it should render correctly. But you basically get the same thing. So the way you get around this is you just go output. Uh, I'm just going to put this back to what it was before. You just go output and you just go invert. And now, with this inverted, it actually is inverted. Like, for some reason, whatever reason it is, that doesn't invert it, but this does. And that's really all you need to do. Right here, you have a basic metal texture. Now, if you take a look at the reference image, that's basically the same texture. If you want, you can create this sort of nickel color. Uh, the easiest way to do it is, if I just bring this reference image straight in here, you can also just grab that color. But if I bring it here, it's kind of easy for me to get to it. And then I'm just gonna click on reflect just pick that nickel color and I'm going to desaturate that a little bit and that's that now that will render that color now a few other things which you can mess around with here you know first of all let's get the size correct so let's make this about 80 and then what you can do is the spread here like if I make this 0.2 you'll see the effect that has You see, you just get less. There's less noise going on. If I make it point 0.1, again, there's even less items. So, by default, it's at point 0.5, but you can also push it up higher if you like. You can put it up to 1. And you can also push this down. You know, like, often I'll go to about point 0.3, I think. I just like the way it looks at point 0.3. You get some raised areas like here, but not so many. And then a couple of other little tricks that you should know is you can mess around with these highs and you can bring these down to also control control how deep this bump is. So let's say I can bring this down to like 0.3 and let's put this in between the two, 0.2. And just save this out just so you can see the difference. So you can already see here it's having a similar effect to the spread here. Similar but different, what it's doing, what this is doing is it's bringing down the whites. So it's making areas which are grey are becoming white, and so they're getting pushed up higher, and that's what that's doing. Now, you could try and counteract it by pushing the spread up. And that works, and that gives you a slightly different, you know, slightly different hammered metal effect. So that's cool too. And let's just have a quick look, A and B. And then if you want to compare, you know, also because you've changed this, you could come in here if you like, and there's no reason you can't just whack that bump up a bit higher. Let's, uh, let's go double. That's nice. You can see the difference here. So this is another way of getting some variation going on. 
And it's just different ways of, of effectively creating a very similar type of thing. Now I'll just show you another little trick. If you want to add in a bit more variation, a bit more detail, you can take this and you can plug it into the reflective glossiness, for instance. Now bear in mind this is still inverted, so let's just turn that off. Uh, because these colors here will work correctly for this. And if we press F9, you can see the areas which are, you know, perfectly mirror-like and other areas which are not reflecting anything at all. And what we can do, we just stop that out there, swap these over. And then what we're going to do is we will, let's just raise this up a bit. Let's push this down a bit and bring that about there. So always feel free to add in some more details like this if you feel it needs a bit more detail. Or you can take that and plug that into the reflection map. Um, but that obviously that will change the color now. We'll have to grab the color from here. And we you know we can put it in here and this is a way of handling that color change if you like. You can just swap that over. Copy. Copy. And then just make this one a bit darker. And this one a bit lighter. So that's another way around that. But here it looks like in the reflection slot we only want about twenty percent. See we're getting a lot of darkness happening here. I don't want so much darkness. Just a little. So you have a lot of detail coming in here. Um, and just one other trick which you can do if you like. You know, you don't have to use bump. You can always just select the item and go into your modifier list and just add in a V-Ray displacement modifier. And then just take this and plug that straight into here where it says no map. Put that in there. Make sure your keep continuity is checked. Right click to make that down. And you can set the amount here at whatever you like. 10 mil, whatever it is. And feel free to use displacement. Instead of using bump if, if you prefer the effect or you want it to look correct on the edges here. Now, one thing which I will say with, uh, with displacement which you need to pay attention to. See how these edges here, they're quite sharp. They're dark right there. And what's causing that is... If I look in this noise map, I've got this high and low, and this middle is too high to the high. So if I put that right in between the two, 0.15, you'll see that'll fix up. It'll just make a softer transition between the white and the gray. But this rule doesn't apply to, to bump. It only applies in the displacement modifier. And that's how you create hammered texture, hammered metal in 3ds Max and V-Ray.